Saiko, The Large Family is a mockumentary about filmmaker Veronica Addison going to Japan to document the Ura family. With birth rates in Japan on a decline, the Ura family is a large, complex family living in the more rural urban area of Tokorozawa. Now before we talk about this film, I never would have heard of this if it wasn't for Dylan texting me late one night saying to watch it. The whole film is available on YouTube, and from what I can tell, there's a lot of different cuts of this film, but this is the one I watched. The film opens like a cheesy made-for-television documentary with Addison setting up the report of the documentary, and there's like this almost amateurish way the film cuts or lingers on certain moments. And starting off, I wasn't really too sure if this was a documentary or a mockumentary due to its level of quality, as Addison is introduced to the family, their home, and kids. It's very believable aesthetically, despite feeling something kind of off about the film. It's authentic to its details, but also feels very staged. Veronica is followed by her interpreter, and something I really enjoyed was how the film cut, allowing Veronica to speak English and then cut to the Japanese response was a great way to keep the authenticity and fluidity of the dialogue. During the first dinner scene, though, is where I started to realize that this might be a mockumentary. I've been bamboozled! Keep in mind, I went into this one without any idea of what this was or what this was going to be, but when the daughter has her outburst against the stepfather, I was like, yeah, yeah, this is fake. As the story progresses, it feels more obvious, but I also love the fact that it really sticks to its guns so well throughout the runtime, never allowing itself to get sensationalized, but keeping a strict form within its own framework that makes the entire experience a refreshing and rewarding one. However, as the documentary unfolds, you start to notice some things. Some things are just kind of off. There's a weird vibe and dynamic with the family as you learn more about them. There's more of a mystery that makes you kind of question a lot of things. The film never allowing itself to really explain anything, but only implying. It's the implications that the film presents where the documentary becomes a lot more interesting. Because of the implication. Now you You've said that word implication a couple of times. Well what implication? We learn that the mother's first husband disappeared. We learn that one of the children died. We learn that one of the children is a shut-in and the other has probably been trafficked. We learn that the family thinks there's a potential spirit haunting them, bringing the family ill will and misfortune. My first experience with the film, I left feeling like it's probably a six out of 10. Like it was good, but it's probably a six out of 10. That it did present something interesting and unique, but nothing really more than that. I left feeling the narrative was somewhat empty. And while I appreciated the presentation, I did feel a little underwhelmed at what I just watched. However, skip a couple days and I had to rewatch this film because there was just something about it that wasn't sitting right with me. I kept thinking about all the doors that the film had opened without ever going into the rooms that left me thinking a lot about the implication. It was something that allowed me to kind of formulate my own ideas about the family and I felt like Sherlock Holmes piecing together the narrative. On a second watch, I noticed an insane amount of detail in the background that added a whole other layer to the film. Like early in the film, we see the mother and father talking to Veronica Monica about the missing husband, and in the background you see a picture of the child that we later learn died. There's also some kind of woman figure by it as well. The mother is constantly looming in the background of her children's confessionals, and even when the boy has his accident that I first thought could have been caused by the shut-in brother, you can for a glimpse see the mother in the window. It's moments like these that made a lot of the film kind of unravel in front of me, adding a layer of depth and mystery. This is a film that you need to pay attention to like every line of dialogue, how certain things are phrased or how phrasing is used, what's being shown or presented, and the implication or context of the information is presented in the open. You need to turn your conspiracy brain on and go fool Alex Jones to get a lot out of this film that makes me appreciate it even more on a second watch. I wonder if there's something even more to find on a third watch to spoil the film, so spoiler warning. Are you kidding really? me? You just ruin it every oh. time! My theories on what is happening with the family is that the mother is the controller of the family. She either killed or had the husband killed to collect the insurance money. He's buried out in the garden. She carefully controls the household, which is what caused the older kids to act out using potential hauntings to pass blame. At the end of the film, we finally cut to see the mother in the hospital, and I'm going to assume that maybe like one of the kids snapped against her. There's a lot of assuming here, but I think that's what the film wants you to do. It wants you to assume things to maximize the effectiveness of its simple story by having potential red herrings and expert presentation. So they are in danger. No one's in any danger. How 
can I make that any more clear to you? Okay, it's an implication of danger. I'm gonna bump my reading up from a six to a seven and a half out of 10. While I do think there is a lot more here on a second viewing, there's still some obvious staging. And as a whole, without the conspiracy brain engaged, it can kind of leave the runtime to linger. This is one though that I definitely think is worth checking out and I'll probably watch it again. Let me know what your thoughts or theories are on this film in the comments down below and shout out to Dylan for the late night dropping of this one onto me. If you want to support what I do, you can consider subscribing. And if you want to go even further, you can consider becoming a member or Patreon. Thank you. Bye.